How do we go about recording audio within Studio One? We'll start at the start page and come to create a new song. And then here we can add our song title. I'll just call this recording audio. And then we'd want to choose our location. This is my default location where I have all of my songs saved to. But for this instance, I'm just going to choose the desktop select that folder and then be sure that you choose the sample rate that you'd like to use as well as the resolution or the bit depth now i typically record at 48 kilohertz at 24 bit this is a pretty good standard to use uh, there's a lot of debate about higher sample rates in this so i'm not going to go into that but 48 kilohertz 24 bit is what i use keep in mind that the higher the sample rate you use the more strain it's going to be on your processor uh, the higher the resolution, the larger your audio files will be. And you also have uh, other options here for your time base, song length, tempo, and time signature. So we'll go ahead and click OK. Another thing that you want to take a look at and be sure that you have set up properly is your audio device. So if we come to Options uh, under the Studio One menu, alternatively we can Control, Comma, and bring that up. Be sure that you choose the audio device that you would like to use to uh, record your audio and be sure that you go into the control panel and adjust your settings there properly. Now this is beyond the scope of this video because there are tons of audio devices and there's no way that I could cover all of that. But uh, one thing I do want to make note of is that your device block size, which is the buffer size of your audio device, and the internal block size, which is specific to within the software, is going to affect the latency. So if you are, for instance, recording vocals and the, your artist would like to have reverb and hear back and monitor from the DAW with that reverb, you're going to get a delay if you don't lower the buffer size. So 128 is kind of a minimum. There's probably going to be a bit of delay even with this, um, but you can use this. Ideally, you'd want to go a little bit lower if you can. So we'll go ahead and click OK. The next step for recording audio would be creating our tracks. And you have a couple of different ways to do that. We can come up to Track, Add Tracks. We could also uh, right-click in the Track column and Add Tracks. But I'm going to press T on my keyboard. And this brings up our Track Options menu. Now we can choose a name. I'm going to call this Vox one we can then choose the type and we it's already on audio so that's what we want how many tracks you'd like and we're just going to use one for now the color it's set to auto color by default but if we uncheck that we can then choose from this palette and uh, determine the color for ourselves for instance if you're recording drums and you want to record set up eight tracks for eight mics, if you're miking up the drum kit, you could choose red. A lot of people will choose a specific color for the instruments that they're working with. So red for drums, uh, purple for bass, um, blue for vocals, however you want to do that and set that up. But this could help you identify the tracks when you are working in the arranger and it will help with mixing and finding everything that you would like to get to and edit. For this instance, I'm going to turn the auto color back on. Next, we have format between mono and stereo. And I'm going to leave this on mono because I'm going to record uh, vocal. The preset we can choose. Uh, Studio One comes with presets for, a, for an effects chain that can be put on this track. And then you can choose those in this menu. The input, uh, this is going to be correlate to your audio device and however many inputs you have on there and how many you have active, you would then choose here. I only have two. My audio device has two inputs and they are shown here. And this is how I la the, labeled them in the options menu. Uh, and we'll take a look at that in a second here. Your output. And again, if you're working with, say, multiple tracks, eight tracks as our I talked about in our previous example with the drums and you add eight you can choose the first input and then ascending 
and then when you click OK, it's going to set it up so track 1 is input 1, track 2 is input 2, track 3, and so on. Um, so I think we have everything set as I would like it. And just keep in mind the input here, how we have mic 1, I want to show you where that, what that corresponds to. If I control comma, come to our audio setup, and then song setup, audio IO setup. Now this is what this relates to, and I have come in and double clicked and renamed these and made that my default. So whenever we're choosing whatever we set up here, this is what we're going to access. And mic 1 corresponds to, uh, well, input 1 on my focus right, which is not being used right now because I'm using a screen capture program and that's another story. I'm going to cancel out of here and I am going to shift E to expand out our mono audio track that we've labeled Vox 1. Now next we need to arm our track to record. If we press record um, right now, then nothing's going to happen because that track is not armed. So you can, we can do this just by clicking on this icon here. Also, pressing R on your keyboard will, will arm that track. Now by default, monitoring is going to be turned on. So this means that we record the instrument or vocals through the mic and the audio interface it comes into the DAW. If we have, say, reverb on that vocal, it's going to then be sent back out through the audio uh, device and through a headset to that singer or player. So if we turn off monitoring, then you're not going to hear anything through the headphones. Uh, some audio uh, interfaces do have direct monitoring where it takes the audio in through the mic and then sends it directly back out through the headphones, but you won't be able to use any effects within the DAW if you use that uh, particular setup. So monitoring will send back out what the DAW is doing to your headphones so you can monitor in that way. And we can turn monitoring off and on by using U on our keyboard. So at this point, we sh we're pretty much set up to go and we can record our artist. Um, we would just hit the asterisk on the keyboard and this is you want to be sure that you've got your gain set properly on your audio device and that's a bit beyond the scope of this video but one simple tip is if you want to play the loudest passage of the song that you're working on or sing the loudest part and then take a look at the clipping however you do this on your audio device and if it clips lower the volume sing or play that part again and then see if it clips you you want to get you know the a good single com signal coming in at the device um, because then it, you want to uh, do your best not to introduce any noise within the song when you're working with it and and working on mixing and effects and all of these things so then we can press record And then as you can see, we get a display of the waveform as it's being recorded. And if you take note, you want to keep an eye out for any clipping. Studio One will, uh, you'll see a little red lead at the uh, track in the track console, letting you know that you've got clipping on the track. And you're probably going to get some distortion and noise, and you really can't get rid of that. Um, once it's in there. So you want to pay close attention to that and be sure there's no clipping in your recorded audio. Now to finish up, I just want to touch on a couple other things to be aware of. If you would like to use a metronome, uh, that is available to you here and you can click this icon in the transport and activate the metronome. You can also press C on your keyboard to turn that on and off. We can adjust some of the options for the metronome by clicking the wrench here. You can see we can adjust the level of the accent, the beat, and we can even choose what we'd like to hear for our metronome, what sort of sound. We also have pre-count and pre-roll available here, and we can double click or click once in this area and choose the number of bars that we would like for these to utilize. And we'll close out of that. 
Also, if you ever need to change your inputs on your tracks, there are several places that we can accomplish this within Studio One. We can come over to the track column, come to our track in question, and click this drop down menu. And you can see that we have the, the options here to choose from. We can click on the I here to access the inspector or press F4 on our keyboard. And then down below here, you can see we can choose between our devices here. And we can also select our output as well. I'll F4 and close that out, and then F3 and bring up our mixer. At the top of our Vox 1 track, we can change our inputs here and our outputs there. I'll F3 and close out the mixer, and I want to add another track to show you something here. If I highlight this track, you see that record and monitor monitoring does not activate when you select the track. We do, but if I select this, we can turn it on by clicking or by using R and notice that the monitoring is on by default. We can change the way that this functions within Studio One. If we come to our options menu, I'll control comma and bring up our um, options menu and then come to advanced and we want to choose the console tab. Now, if we t turn on the audio input follow selection and deselect audio track monitoring follows record and hit apply, okay. Now, when I select this track, it will be on for recording, but the monitoring will not be on. Okay? So now, whatever track I select, it's going to be on for recording when we change that setting. And we could have left the monitoring to come on by default, and so that whenever we select a track, it will be on for recording and uh, monitoring as well. So I'll control comma come back and turn the audio track monitoring follows record back on turn off the audio input follow selection apply okay and let's just undo those and so now whenever I select select a track we are back at our original settings